what is a kiln? How does it work? What is it for? What are some tips that I need to know? Are these things that you have asked yourself? Well, we're gonna be reviewing, talking about my kiln here in my studio, and hopefully it will give you some knowledge, some tips and tricks, and you'll just find out some information. Ayo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Potter with Grandmaster Glass. Welcome back to my channel, your home for glass blowing. Talking about my kiln. I own an AIM micro hopper kiln. There are lots of different kilns. They all work the same. They do the job. They remove stress from the glass. There's lots of different applications. Lots of industries use kilns. But today we're gonna to be talking about mine. We're gonna even look at some definitions and we're gonna just show you a few things. So whether you just wanna know what the purpose of glass, you enjoy glass and you like to know how it's made, this is one of the tools that is used to complete your favorite glass pieces. Now maybe you're also a glass artist or somebody that wants to begin gl gl blowing glass. Well, we're gonna give you some information. Let's turn this right around. So everybody's on the same page. We just got some like Google, definitions of like what a kiln is uh a kiln uh a thermically thermally insulated chamber a type of oven that produces temperature sufficient to complete some processes such as hardening drying or chemical changes kilns have been used for a millennia to turn objects into clay into pottery tiles and bricks and so that's just like when you just look up what a kiln is it, well it doesn't include glass also millennia thousand years that's dope. So then moving on, like what an actual annealing glass kiln is. And an annealing, a glass annealing ovens or furnaces are used by glass blowers to eliminate stress created in glassware during the glass blowing process. Under controlled conditions, the oven slowly and evenly heats the glass to annealing temperatures. And so what that has to do with is basically you'll hear, if you ever hear a glass blower mention the COE, it's the coefficient of, of, of expansion. Glass, it, it expands and contracts. And so when you're adding glass and combining colors, it creates massive amounts of stress. If you, if you begin to work it and bend it, it creates more stress. So having a kiln is the key ingredient to basically baking baking the stress out of your glass, if you will. So yeah, that is the definitions of like a glass blowing annealing kiln. So we all know like what that is. So like I said, this model that you are looking at right here is an AIM micro hopper made by the company AIM, AIM. And it is a hinge style kiln. There's also kilns that are garage style that lift vertically and there are also ones that are top loaders that the top just opens. The most important thing you want, something that's going to set you up for future proofing, is something that has a bead door. Whatever option you end up choosing, you want a bead door. That is definitely the most important kind of kiln. As well, you want a bead rest, but the kiln itself does the job no matter what. It's got coils in there. And then it's got a controller. There are analog controllers and digital controllers. Simple on and off switch with this model. It's got two doors. So if you're working on a project then you've got a separate door right here, I find that really convenient. Down below, like I said, it's super, super simple, basic. It's the controller on off switch and the controller. I'll switch it on in a moment, show you guys how that works. As well, I think the other most important thing to note with a kiln that you as a buyer or somebody that doesn't know about kilns is how to power it. So if you're in a garage or somewhere in a studio, you want to make sure you've got the right outlets. The kiln, this kiln right here is 60 pounds, super small, heats up to what I need to, holds great temperature, and it is a 15 amp. 120 volt 15 amp and this is the type of plug any home will have a 15 amp where it gets tricky if you get a bigger kiln one of the paragon kilns any of those type of kilns 
they start stepping up to 20 amp, 30 amp, and those are different outlets than what you would find at a home. Sometimes your garage will have a 20 amp, a 20 amp and above, but it's just something that as, as a buyer of a kiln, you need to make sure you can power it. Cause I've seen plenty of people be able to, or I've seen plenty of people be, buy a kiln and not be able to power it right away because they don't have the right type of outlet. That was one of the main choices in this was that I'm able to literally plug it in anywhere I go. It is about nine by four by 13, but not the biggest, but I can fit things in sideways. I can transport it as I grow and evolve. We will definitely get bigger kilns, but as it stands, this is a perfect introductory kiln, perfect price point. They go, they skyrocket going from a thousand all the way to $4,000. So this one is a perfect beginner kiln as well. When we open it, I thought I'd mention, I have a kiln mat. It prevents dust and like scraping and debris getting on pieces on your glass. Highly recommend one of those. Inside of the kiln, there are coils and those are what heat up. Those are the heating elements. There in the center, you can see that is a, so it's a type of, temperature gauge that's what monitors the temperature inside the kiln it's covered in kiln brick and then metal on the outside like i said it's only 60 pounds it actually has handles on either side so you're able to transport it I find that super convenient this i had to buy separate didn't come with the kiln this is a uh a rod rest adjustable so it can come out it lowers and and it raises and it's very it's almost a must have if you've got the bead door because if you have something hanging out you really you really want to be able to rest it to have that rod rest and uh that's that's super super important something that that is an ease of use and makes your your life easier when operating a kiln then like i said very simple flip of the switch to power it on. Automatically, my kiln is going to kick on to 1,050 degrees. That is the holding temperature for glass. The, the whole controller, I wish was a little bit more um, user-friendly. If anybody's familiar with Raspberry Pis, I wish you could hook a Raspberry Pi up to it to a kiln controller to be able to do it all digital but uh it's almost like radio instructions it doesn't make too much sense but once you get the hang once you understand what is going on you can run a program or you can turn it off and then if you hold the button for about five seconds you can go in and start to change settings You've got basically three, sorry, you've got two settings and parameters to change. You can change how quickly it heats up, how quickly it, it holds. You can do all types of things. And I can do a more in-depth video. If people would like, definitely drop a comment down below. But the whole controller part is the most complex, difficult thing to, to understand in the beginning. I see a lot of artists if there's not a lot of complex seals and things going on, they'll just crash the kiln. They'll just completely turn it off. There is a 100% science to annealing glass, removing all the stress from it, different things like that. I mean, it, it's a science all of its own. If you were to have a marble that was four inches and had an opal in the center, you're gonna, the, the surface area, the surface of the marble is gonna cool much quicker than the core. The core remains hot and that core heat remains. So there to be able to cool something on the outside, bring it back to temperature, drop it, bring it up, drop it. That's the whole process of annealing and running steps and stages. And it doesn't, it, it's some of that even goes over my head, but I don't wanna overwhelm you with information. That was just a little bit of a rundown of everything I know about a kiln, everything I wish I would have known, things that will be pointers and really help you out in the future. Or like I said, if you just wanna know about glass building and you appreciate glass, knowing that your glass piece came out of a kiln like this, 
that that's how it works. There we can see it heating up and that's one of the most fun shots right there. You can see a very, very even heat. There's a little bit of a heat pocket in the back, but overall very, very even heat throughout the coils. We've got double coils, none on the top. Like I said, the kiln mat really does help out. It does get quite warm, but it's very insulated through the, the kiln bricks and then the metal on the outside. Once it's at 1050, I mean, I can still always put my hand completely on it. Uh, and it's a fantastic kiln. I don't think I did mention, if you are wanting to do your own research, some of the other kilns, some of the other manufacturers in the industry. Like I said, this is AIM, A-I-M. There's Paragon and there's Scut kilns. Those are the three in the glass industry that I see people use. Um, there are lots of different industries, metalworking, there's uh, ceramics, brick, tiling, uh, pottery, just all types of uh, industries also use kilns and different applications, different ways. So uh, I'm not sure how much crosses over, but for borosilicate glass blowing, this is the annealing kiln that I use. And hopefully you found some information helpful from this video. Uh, I'm gonna flip this around. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you found some good information. And uh, like I said, this is your home for glass blowing. We're gonna be making videos, trying to do like every day before I start blowing glass, we're gonna get out here, make a video, you know, talk about the tools, talk about the torch, maybe talk about something in the industry that's going on. You know, just anything that encompasses glass blowing, I want this to be your home for glass blowing. Share it with all the homies. Have a good sesh when my videos come out. Everybody have a good talk about it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And remember guys, like, comment, subscribe, and never stop evolving.